Today I want to talk a bit about contrast in DaVinci Resolve. Especially when you are a beginner, this video is for you. If you're new on my channel, my name is Adrian, so tap subscribe if you haven't already and let's start. So basically what the contrast is. It is a difference between the lightest and the darkest parts of an image. You can monitor it using waveform down below. If you don't see it, click scopes button and select waveform. In the settings, I have switched to Y instead RGB and I have unchecked colorize option. That's my preferred way to monitor the contrast. So yeah, the simplest way to control contrast is by using contrast control in the primaries wheels. So as the definition says, if we increase contrast, the distance between bright and dark will increase also. And the other way around, if we decrease it, the distance will be smaller. So by observing only the waveform, you can already tell if the image is contrasty or not. Let's make a quick experiment. I will adjust only the contrast and observe the waveform. So let me expand this view and cover the preview window to not cheat. Okay, I will boost the contrast, correct the pivot also, and let's see how it looks. Not bad. So this is before and after. Of course, this is not how you do it. The most important is final result and not how the waveform looks. This example should only give you the idea why monitoring waveform is important. So let me reset it. If you double click the control, it will go back to its default value. So let's do it again, but this time we will observe preview window and waveform at the same time. It seems too far, but if you look at the waveform, we are not clipping, which means we are not touching zero levels, which is total black, and the max value, which is uh, total white. The image is contrasty, but too dark. So this is when adjusting pivot point is helpful. The default value of the pivot point is 0.435. What it means is the contrast control will treat all the values above 435 as bright, and everything what is less than that value is considered to be dark. So what I'm gonna do now is to try to find out which part of the image is actually at level 435. In the waveform settings, let me enable reference level and I will set low to 435. So now I can see where on the waveform is exactly the value 435. It's marked with this gray line. Now let's choose the qualifier tool and by hovering over the preview, we can see on the waveform what is the luminance of the selected area. Let me try to search for this 435 level. It looks like somewhere here. Seems like the rocks have that luminance value. So that is why if we increase or decrease the contrast, the rocks luminance brightness in general stays more or less at the same level and the rest of the image gets darker or brighter. Depends if it's below or above the value 435. So let me reset contrast value again, and let's say I want to have my pivot point set to the level of the grass, which is somewhere around here, 310 maybe. So now if I increase contrast, the grass should stay at the same level. I should not be worrying now that the contrast will make it darker or brighter, I hope you've got the idea of the pivot point and how you can set it to your needs. As a side effect, you get a more saturated image, but saturation is a topic for another video. So this is before and after using only contrast and pivot controls. Before I go to the second method, I will create a new version of it. Okay. So the second way to add contrast would be using gain and offset wheels mainly. So what I'm gonna do is boost gain, try to preserve waveform to not clip the image too much, then decrease the offset wheel, like that, and repeat this process as many times as you need. This is a linear way of adding contrast. The previous method was using S-curve contrast. I'll discuss it in a moment. Let me compare to the previous version so we know where we are. I wanna make it more or less similar looking. Okay, let's say we've got similar looking images uh, contrast-wise, but looking at the waveform, 
we can already tell the second method, linear, is crushing highlights and shadows. The clipping is definitely there. And why is that? Let me explain. I got here a black and white gradient. On waveform, gradient is represented as a straight line. Here you have black and in the opposite corner there is a white color. If you add contrast to this image using contrast control, see what happens. Shadows get darker, highlights get brighter, but overall we do not touch the maximum values. This is a roll-off effect, I digress. Of course, if we go to the extreme, it will eventually meet the maximum values and will start clipping. Ok, let me reset that. Whereas, if we add contrast using primaries wheels, gain an offset, gain an offset again, we are starting to clip immediately. So you might ask, why should we use the second method at all? Well, there are of course many reasons. Roll-off effect is not always desired. Sometimes you want to have clipping in the final result. Or you want to have more linear looking contrast. If you have log footage and it's correctly exposed, even if you add linear contrast, it will not be clipping. For example, let's say this is our log footage. So we have plenty of space below the darkest part and above the brightest part. If I add some contrast using the linear method and I observe the waveform, I can do it so I do not crush the image. I hope it makes sense. So that would be it for today. Thanks for watching guys. As always, leave a comment if you have any questions or if you just want to support my channel. Tap subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my other videos and products. Take care and see you in the next one.